There's a reason why this song is playing to open up the podcast. Let's just get right into it. The Washington Capitals are your 2018 Stanley Cup champions. First time in franchise history. This is so deserving. Alex Ovechkin was the winner of the Conn Smythe Trophy. That was well-deserved, too. I absolutely loved his emotion when he was carrying around the cup. It was tremendous. Let's get right into it. Scoreless after one. Second period. Jacob Verana, his third of the playoffs, gets the caps on the board, assisted by Tom Wilson and Evgeny Kuznetsov to make it a 1-0 game. Nate Schmidt's third of the playoffs, assisted by Riley Smith and Jonathan Marshall ties it up at one apiece. Alex Ovechkin's 15th of the playoffs on the power play, assisted by Nicholas Backstrom and John Carlson, 2-1 caps. David Perron's first of the playoffs, assisted by Thomas Tatar and Colin Miller, ties it up at two apiece. Riley Smith's fifth of the playoffs on the power play, assisted by Alex Tuck and Shea Theodore, gave the Knights a 3-2 lead. Third period, Devontae smith Pelly seventh of the playoffs, assisted by Brooks Orpik, ties it up at three apiece. And the go-ahead Stanley Cup game winning goal, Lars Eller, his seventh of the playoffs, assisted by Brett Connolly and Andre Burakovsky, give the Capitals a 4-3 lead, and they hold on for the win for the Cup. This was just a, such a fun game to watch. Braden Holpe, 28 saves on 31 shots. The decision to go back to him after pulling Philip Gaubauer is going to go down as the best decision in franchise history, perhaps. And Marc-Andre Fleury, 29 saves on 33 shots. Barry Trotz is sure to come back now. He's a free agent. But I think for sure that the Capitals are going to bring him back after winning their first cup in franchise history. The Vegas Golden Knights had a wonderful season. They should be proud. They're here to stay in the Western Conference. They're only going to get better. They have a ton of assets going forward. The Capitals, I think, took advantage of this window. Good for them. I'm not sure how much longer they're going to be a cup contender. Their court's getting a little bit older. There was talk when they were down 0-2 against the Blue Jackets in the first round that they are going to break up the core and Barry Trotz was going to move on. I don't think they're going to break up the core now that they just won the cup. Although I saw the Chicago Blackhawks sort of break up their core after they won the cup in 2015, but they're not in cap hell like the Blackhawks were and still are. Good for the Capitals. Good for their fans. Good for D.C. This is that city's first championship in a very long time, and they deserve this. Alex Ovechkin deserves this. He deserved that Conn Smythe trophy. He led the playoffs and goals. So good for them. Let's move on now to Major League Baseball. Yesterday's games, not a lot of them because some teams were traveling and whatnot. The Reds defeated the Rockies 7 to 5 in 13 innings as they improve to 22 and 41. Colorado drops to 32 and 30. Dylan Floro with the win. Chris Rusin with the loss. Rusin drops to 0-2. Floro improves to 2-1. Top of the first. Ground run to double play by Nolan Arenado. Allows a run to score. 1-0 Rockies. Bottom of the second. RBI double. Kurt Casale ties it up at 1 apiece. Top of the third. RBI single. Carlos Gonzalez. 2-1 Rockies. Top of the fourth. Bases loaded. Hit by pitch. Tony Wolters allows a run to score. 3-1 Rockies. Bottom of the fifth. RBI double. Scott Shebler. 3-2 Rockies. Top of the sixth, RBI triple, Ryan McMahon. 4-2 Rockies. Sacrifice fly, DJ LeMayu. 5-2 Rockies. Bottom of the eighth, RBI ground out, Joey Votto. Made it a 5-3 game. Another RBI ground out into fielder's choice by Eugenio Suarez. Made it a 5-4 game. Bottom of the ninth, a wild pitch by Wade Davis. Allows Kurt Casale to score to tie it up at five apiece. Bottom of the 13th, the walk-off, two-run home run, Jesse Winker. 7-5 Reds is your final. Tyler Maley, five innings, six hits. Two earned runs, two walks, and six strikeouts leaves the game with a 4.33 ERA. Tyler Anderson, seven innings, five hits, two earned runs, a walk, and five strikeouts leaves the game with a 4.81 ERA. The Dodgers defeat the Pirates take the seven as they improve to 31-31. The Pirates drop to 31-31. 
Pedro buys with the win, improves to 3-3. Three three. Jamison Tyon with the loss drops to 3-5. and five. Kaylee Jansen gets his 15th save of the year. Note about this game that the Dodgers used a record nine pitchers to hold off the Pirates. And the Dodgers pretty much pulled a raise and went bullpen by committee, sort of. Top of the first, home run Jack Peterson went off the Dodgers. Bottom of the third, sacrifice fly, Gregory Blanco ties up at one apiece. Top of the fourth, bunt single, Brevik Valera, 2-1 Dodgers. Top of the fifth, fielder choice, Matt Kemp, 3-1 Dodgers. Top of the sixth, RBI double, Yasiel Puig, 4-1 Dodgers. Bottom of the sixth, RBI double, Josh Bell made it a 4-2 game. Sacrifice fly, Elias Diaz, 4-3. Top of the seventh, two-run home run, Cody Ballinger, 6-3 Dodgers. Top of the eighth, two-run home run, Jack Peterson, 8-3 Dodgers. Bottom of the eighth, three-run home run, Elias Diaz, 8-6. Bottom of the ninth, home run, Francisco Cervelli, made it 8-7. And the Dodgers hold them off. That's your final. Pedro Baez had the best performance in relief, perhaps. Two innings, two hits, an earned run, no walks, and no strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 3.34 ERA. Daniel Hudson started the game in inning. No hits, no earned runs, a walk, and a strikeout. Left the game with a 4.84 ERA. So they pretty much did pull a raise there. Jamison Tyon, five innings, eight hits, three earned runs, a walk, and seven strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 4.08 ERA. The Twins defeated the White Sox 7-2 as they improved to 27-32. The White Sox stopped to 20-40. and 40. Jose Barrios with the win improves to 7-5. James Shields with the loss drops to 1-7. Bottom of the first, two-run home run, Eduardo Escobar, 2-0 two Twins. Bottom of the second home run, Erie Adrianza, 3-0 Twins. Bottom of the fourth, RBI single, Brian Dozier, 4-0 Twins. Three-run home run, Eddie Rosario, 7-0 Twins. Top of the sixth, RBI double, Yon Moncada, 7-1. RBI double, Jose Abreu, 7-2. That's your final. Jose Brios, complete game. He went nine innings, six hits, two in runs, no walks, and ten strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 3.66 ERA. James Shields, six innings, eight hits, seven in runs, two walks, and six strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 4.92 ERA. The Cardinals defeat the Marlins 4 to 1 as they improved to 33 and 27. The Marlins dropped to 22 and 40. Miles McCullis with the win improves to 7 and 1. Trevor Richards with the loss and drops to 0 and 3. Bud Norris gets his 12th save of the year. Bottom of the first, two-run home run, Jose Martinez. 2 nothing Cardinals. Top of the sixth, RBI double, Justin Bohr made it a 2-1 game. Bottom of the sixth, RBI single, Marcelo Zuna, 3-1 cards. Bottom of the seventh, home run, Luke Voigt. 4-1 cards is your final. Miles McCullough, 7 innings, 3 hits, and no earned runs. A walk and 5 strikeouts, leaves the game to 2.27 ERA. Trevor Richards, 5 innings, 7 hits, 3 earned runs, no walks, and 4 strikeouts. Leaves the game with the 5.02 ERA. The Cubs defeat the Phillies 4-3 as they improve to 35-24. and 24. Philly drops to 32-28. and 28. Brian Dunsing with the win improves to 2-0. Nick Pavetta with the loss drops to 4-5. and 5. Brandon Morrow gets his 15th save of the year. Bottom of the 4th, home run Anthony Rizzo. Went off the Cubs. Top of the 5th, RBI single. Carl Santana ties up at 1 apiece. Bottom of the 5th. RBI single, Tommy LaStella, 2-1 Cubs. Infield single, Chris Bryant, 3-1 Cubs. Sacrifice by Anthony Rizzo, 4-1 Cubs. Top of the sixth, two-run double, Scott Kingery. 4-3 Cubs was your final. Tyler Chatwin, 4 and 2 thirds innings, 4 hits and earned runs, 7 walks and 6 strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 3.86 ERA. Nick Pavetta, 5 innings, 6 hits, 4 and runs, a walk and 6 strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 3.76 ERA. The Tigers defeat the Red Sox, 7-2. As they improved to 30 and 34. Boston drops to 43 and 20. Matt Boyd with the win improves to 4 and 4. Jalen Beeks with the loss drops to 0 and 1. Top of the first, RBI double. Hamir Candelario, 1 0 Tigers. 2 run single, John Hicks. 3 0 Tigers. 2 run home run, Leonis Martin. 5 0 Tigers. Bottom of the first, Horan Andrew Benatendi. Makes it a 5 1 game. Top of the third, RBI double, Jose Iglesias. 6-1 Tigers, bottom of the 5th, RBI ground out Xander Bogarts made it 6-2, top of the 8th, RBI single Jose Iglesias, 7-2 Tigers, your final, Matt Boyd, 6 in the 3rd innings, 4 hits, 2 in runs, 4 walks and 6 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 3.2 ERA, Jalen Beeks, 4 innings, 7 hits, 6 in runs, 3 walks and 4 strikeouts, leaves the game with an ugly 13.5 ERA, the Blue Jays defeated the Orioles 5-4 in 10 innings as they improved to 27-35. and 
Baltimore drops a 19 and 42. Danny Barnes with the win improves to 2 and 1. Miguel Castro with the loss drops to 1 and 2. Top of the first, sacrifice fly Manny Machado, one out to the Orioles. Bottom of the first, home run Curtis Granderson ties up at one apiece. Top of the seventh, home run Austin wins, 2 1 O's. Top of the eighth, home run Danny Valencia, 3 1 O's. Home run Mark Trumbo, 4 1 O's. Bottom of the ninth, here come the Blue Jays, two run double. Randall Gritchick made it 4 3. RBI single, Kevin Pilar made it 4 4. Bottom of the tenth, the walk off single, and Lemmy's Diaz, 5 4 Toronto is your final. Jame Garcia, six innings, four hits, and earned run, three walks, and six strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 5.57 ERA. David Hess, six innings, five hits, and earned run, two walks, and four strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 3.07 ERA. The Mariners defeated the Rays 5 to 4 as they improved to 39 and 23. The Rays dropped to 28 and 33. Mike Leak with the win improves to 6 and 3. Austin Peru with the loss drops to 1 and 3. Top of the second sacrifice fly, D. Gordon, 1 0 Mariners. Two run single Mitch Hanniger, three nothing Mariners. Top of the third home run Denard Span, four nothing Mariners. Bottom of the third home run Daniel Robertson made it a four one game. Top of the fifth home run Mitch Hanniger, five one Mariners. Bottom of the ninth bases clearing double Johnny Field, five four was your final. Mike Leake, eight innings, eight hits, two earned runs, a walk and three strikeouts leaves the game with a four point four six ERA. Ryan Stanick was the Rays opener for the game, won an inning, gave up a hit, no one runs, two walks and two strikeouts, leaves the game with a 3.38 ERA. Austin Pruitt was their middle, seven innings, seven hits, five hit runs, a walk and six strikeouts, leaves the game with a 4.57 ERA. The Astros feed the Rangers 5-2 as they improved to 39-25. and The Rangers dropped to 27-38. and Garrett Cole with the win improves to 7-1. and Cole Hamels with the loss drops to 3-6. and Bottom of the first, RBI single, Adrian Beltre, one nothing Rangers. Top of the fourth, RBI single, Jose Altuve ties up at one apiece. Two-run home run, Evan Gaddis, 3-1 Astros. Top of the sixth, RBI single, Evan Gaddis, 4-1 Astros. Top of the eighth, home run, Alex Bregman, 5-1 Astros. Bottom of the ninth, RBI double, Robinson Torinos, 5-4, your final. Garrett Cole, six innings, three hits, an earned run, three walks, and eight strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 2.16 CRA. Cole Hamill, seven in the third inning, seven hits, five and runs, two walks and five strikeouts, leaves the game the 3.86 ERA. The Athletics defeated the Royals four to one as they improved the 32 and 31. The Royals dropped to 21 and 42. Paul Blackburn with the win improves to one and zero. Jason Hamill with the loss drops to two and six. Blake Trinan gets his 14th save of the year. Top of the third home run, Alcides Escobar one up the Royals. Bottom of the fourth home run, Matt Olson ties up at one apiece. Bottom of the sixth, RBI double. Matt Chapman, 2 one A's. RBI single, Marcus Simeon, 3 one A's. RBI single, Stephen Piscotti, 4 one A's is your final. Paul Blackburn, 6 innings, 3 hits, an earned run, no walks, and 3 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 1.5 ERA. Jason Hamill, 6 innings, 8 hits, 4 and runs, a walk, and 6 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 5.12 ERA. Today's games, 2-20, you have the Pirates and the Cubs, Chad Cole and Mike Montgomery. 7 o'clock, Giants Nationals, Andrew Suarez and Steven Strasburg, Brewers Phillies, Julius Chassin and Vince Velasquez, Orioles Blue Jays, Andrew Kashner and J.A. Happ, Yankees Mets, Masahiro Tanaka and Jacob DeGrom, White Sox, Red Sox, Dylan Covey and Chris Sale. How about Sale facing his former team there? Indians Tigers, Trevor Bauer and Michael Fulmer, Cardinals Reds, Luke Weaver and Matt Harvey, Padres Marlins, Eric Lauer and Caleb Smith, Mariners Rays, Marco Gonzalez, and your opener for the Rays this time is Wilmer Font. 8 o'clock, you have Astros Rangers, Justin Verlander and Doug Fister, two ex-teammates there, Angels Twins, Garrett Richards and Lance Lynn, 840 Diamondbacks Rockies. Zach Greinke and Herman Marquez. 10 o'clock, Royals Athletics. Jacob Junis and Frankie Montas. Braves Dodgers. You have Brandon McCarthy and Walker Bueller. Now I'm going to do my NHL mock draft. This is going to be my fifth mock draft that I've done. The NHL draft is in two weeks from today, which is crazy. I'm going to say the team, the player, and do a quick little description, as I usually do. 
Number one, Buffalo Sabres. Rasmus Dahlin, defenseman. Dahlin is the consensus best player in the draft class, and Dahlin gets the chance to go to a young team that needs more transcendent talent on it other than Jack Eichel. He will pair on the top pairing with Rasmus Ristolainen for the foreseeable future in Buffalo. Two, Carolina Hurricanes. Andrei Shneshnikov, the winger. The Canes have an up-and-coming defense, so here they address their biggest need, which is scoring. He has elite scoring touch, but can also play a power forward game. 3. Montreal Canadiens. Brady Tikachuk, the wing. The Canadiens are a team that is in dire need of young talent, and Tikachuk would be a nice start. Tikachuk has a lot of offensive talent and has greatly improved his skating as the year went on. 4. Ottawa Senators. Philip Zadina, the wing. The Sens have a ton of needs regardless of what they do with Eric Carlson. Zadina is a pure shooter and his talented shot could be used from anywhere in the offensive zone. 5. Arizona Coyotes. Noah Dobson, defenseman. The Coyotes have a need on defense and Dobson would be a nice fit. He had a tremendous second half of the season and climbed up draft boards everywhere. 6. Detroit Red Wings. Quinn Hughes, defenseman. The Red Wings have a lot of needs, although they have some promising young players. Hughes is a top puck mover and can skate like the wind. 7. Vancouver Canucks. Evan Bouchard, defenseman. Bouchard would be a solid choice here for the Canucks, considering that they have a need on defense. He is one of the smartest defensemen in the draft, and his passing ability allows him to generate offense from all three zones of the ice while staying in great position. 8. Chicago Blackhawks. Oliver Wallstrom, forward. The Blackhawks are a team that's aging, so they need a lot of youth. Wallstrom is a talent that they might not pass up on due to his off-the-chart levels of creativity mixed with a high-end shot and vision. 9. New York Rangers. Jesperi Kutkemi, the center. As expected for a 17-year-old, Korkinemi needs to grow and develop. He's a very good skater and offensive player, but he needs to grow his defensive positioning. 10. Edmonton Oilers. Adam Boquist, defenseman. The Oilers have a need on defense, and Boquist would be a nice fit. He's an elite puck-moving defenseman who will be likely one of the ones that are first to go off the board, although his stock is trending down. 11. New York Islanders. Barrett Hayton, the center. People out there think that Hayton is the best two-way center in the draft. The one thing holding Hayton back is his production. He has all the tools to be successful and an elite player, but his numbers just didn't show it. 12. New York Islanders from the Calgary Flames. Ty Smith, defenseman. The Isles have a need on defense and Smith fits the bill. He is more known for his offensive game rather than his defensive game and is slightly undersized, but as the game continues to evolve, that is less and less of an issue as long as the talent is there to back it up. 13. Dallas Stars. Joe Valino, forward. The Stars have a bigger need on defense, but Valino will be hard to pass up on. He is a smart and versatile center who is just as effective defensively as he is offensively. 14. Philadelphia Flyers from the St. Louis Blues. Joel Faraby, wing. The Flyers take the forward here in Faraby. He possesses an elite shot for his age and is a gifted skater and knows how to use it to benefit himself. 15. Florida Panthers. Bold Wild, defenseman. The Panthers really don't have any needs, but passing up on a talent like Wild will be hard. He is a complete defenseman who is talented in both ends of the ice and has a pro-level shot and close to pro-level skating at the age of 18. 16. Colorado Avalanche. Isaac Lundstrom, forward. Lundstrom won't blow past anyone with blinding speed, but he is a talented skater. He has versatility and powerful strides that make him hard to knock off the puck. 17. New Jersey Devils. Grigory Dinsenko, the wing. Dinsenko projects as a high-end scorer, but will need to be less generous with the puck on the attack. He has high-end dangle and deception skills and seems to be able to take games over, or at the very least, looks to me a cut above everyone else on the ice sheet. 18. Columbus Blue Jackets. Vitaly Kravstov, wing. For Kravstov's age and the level of competition he plays at is a good defender. 
He needs to continue to grow, but has the talent and uses his speed to get himself into a good position, causing turnovers and generating offense. 19. Philadelphia Flyers Rasmus Sandin, defenseman. What makes Sandin great is his ability to play in all situations. It does not matter if it's on the power play, penalty kill, or even strength. Sandin thrives in all of them. 20. Los Angeles Kings Martin Caught, wing. Caught is a pure goal scorer. His powerful skating ability allows him to drive to the net. When he gets there, he has the quick hands and finish and tight. He can also pounce on rebounds or tip in shots. 21. San Jose Sharks Keandre Miller, defenseman. Miller will be a little bit of a project, but a project that will be well worth the wait. A lot of young defensemen struggle with defensive responsibility. Not him. His best attribute is his defensive play. As he continues to develop, his game will only get better. 22. Ottawa Senators from Pittsburgh Penguins. Dominic Bach, wing. The Sens take Bach here, who is a fast riser on folks' mock boards of late. He has shredded international competition and is closer to the NHL than you would think. 23. Anaheim Ducks. Ryan McLeod, center. McLeod can create chances everywhere on the ice with his elite skating ability. He can also stick handle through anyone on the ice at any time. 24. Minnesota Wild. Akil Thomas, center. Thomas is a center who can put up points in bunches. One of his best attributes is his work ethic with and without the puck and is responsible in all three zones and never takes a shift off. 25. Toronto Maple Leafs. Jared McIsaac, defenseman. Due to his great skating talent, McIsaac is able to carry the puck out of his zone and start the offense. He is also able to quickly recover when necessary and does well to get back in position. 26. New York Rangers from Boston Bruins Ryan Merkley, defenseman. The Rangers used their second first round pick to improve their defensive prospect pool. Merkley is a boom or bust prospect with the most offensive upside of all defensemen in the draft. 27. Chicago Blackhawks from the Nashville Predators. Alexander Alexiev, defenseman. Alexiev is a big Russian import who has really improved at the pace at which he plays in all phases. He is a rangy defender with footwork who can transport through the neutral zone in a few strides. 28. New York Rangers from the Tampa Bay Lightning. Ty DeLandria, center. DeLandria is versatile and his best attribute is his skating with the puck on his stick. Some players his age have great speed but can struggle to handle the puck. He is the opposite and actually gets better with the puck on his stick. 29. St. Louis Blues from the Winnipeg Jets. Matthias Samuelson, defenseman. There are plenty of talented offensive defensemen in this year's draft, but Samuelson is not nearly as flashy or talented offensively. His game is taking care of the puck in his own end and shutting down opponents. 30. Detroit Red Wings from the Vegas Golden Knights. Jacob Olofsson, center. Olofsson is also good at controlling the puck down low and making plays out of the cycle game. He also gets to the front of the net and has the hand-eye coordination to tip in pucks and the quickness to pounce on rebounds. 31. Washington Capitals. Saran Noel, wing. Noel is one of the elite wingers in this year's draft class in terms of projected first-round prospects. He is really strong offensively, featuring good hands and a great shot, and because of his size and good hands, He can score a lot of his goals from in tight. That's it for this mock draft. Quickly, before I pick game four of the NBA Finals tonight, Brian Colangelo and the Sixers parted ways yesterday. I briefly discussed this on the podcast. David Griffin, the former Cavaliers GM, is reportedly interested in this job. And I'm hearing also that there's GMs around the league that currently have GM roles that are interested in this job. I don't blame them because the Sixers are a team on the rise. They have a lot of young assets, a lot of cap space, and they're going to be contenders for the next couple seasons. And last but not least, Game 4, NBA Finals, tonight, 9 o'clock, ABC, Mike Breen, Mark Jackson, Jeff Van Gundy, Doris Burke, on the call. Will the Cavaliers... Make this a 3-1 series to force a Game 5? Or will the Warriors pull off the sweep tonight? I think that although I picked the Warriors in 5, 
I believe they pull it off tonight because I thought the Cavs were going to win game three. But I think that they missed an opportunity there. and They missed an opportunity in game one. Golden State's the better team. I do believe this will be a close game as the Warriors will pull off the sweep, the first team to pull off a sweep in the NBA Finals since the 2007 San Antonio Spurs, which was ironically the first time LeBron James made the finals in his career. Let's go 115-107 Warriors for the win. Your finals MVP will be Kevin Durant. I think he stole the finals MVP away from Stephen Curry in game three. I believe Durant will win those honors and deservedly so. And the media is going to be talking all weekend long about how possibly Kevin Durant has supplanted LeBron James as the best player in the NBA. I still don't believe that. I still believe LeBron's the best player in the world. But he's just on a weaker team and Durant has better teammates than LeBron. Although I do think Durant is underrated from a defensive standpoint. He gets blocks. He gets rebounds. I think he's an underrated all-around player. But LeBron's just the better player, period, end of story. But give me the Warriors to pull off the sweep and for Kevin Durant to be named your finals MVP. 115-107 Warriors. The NBA Finals will be over by the time the next time I do a podcast. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping Game 4 of the NBA Finals, previewing and picking the winner of the Belmont Stakes, which is tomorrow. And I'll also be doing... MLB future power rankings as well as going over all the baseball action from tonight and looking ahead to tomorrow for baseball as well. I hope you guys have a great day, everybody.